So we have some words here that relate to different reactions and whether they absorb or release different types of energy. So the first word here, exothermic. Exothermic, the root of the word is therm, which relates to heat. And this word indeed means a reaction that releases heat. Releases, releases, it releases heat. And one way to think about it, if you're thinking about constant pressures, your change in enthalpy, it can be viewed as your, as your, how much heat you absorb or release. So a negative change in enthalpy, negative change in enthalpy, means that you're releasing heat. One way to think of, if you view enthalpy as heat content, you have, you have less heat content after the reaction than before it, which meant you released heat, which means your change in enthalpy is going to be less than zero. So these all mean the same thing. Well, this, this is true. You're releasing heat. This is the same thing as releasing heat if you talk about constant pressure. Constant. Pressure, which is a reasonable assumption if you're doing something in a beaker that's open to the air, or if you're thinking about a lot of different biological systems. Now, based on that logic, what do you think this word means? Endothermic. Well, endothermic, endothermic, therm, same root, and now your prefix is endo. So this is a process that absorbs heat. Absorbs. Absorbs heat. Or if you're thinking at constant pressure, you can say your enthalpy after the reaction is going to be higher than the enthalpy before the reaction. So your delta H, delta H is going to be greater than, greater than zero. All right, fair enough. Now let's look at these two characters over here, exergonic and endergonic. So exergonic, the root here is ergon. And that, you might not be as familiar with that as you are with therm, but you might have heard the word ergonomic. Say, hey, that's a nice ergonomic desk. That means it's a desk that's good to do work at, or it's a nice ergonomic chair. And ergon does indeed come from the Greek for work. And so exergonic is a reaction that releases work energy, or at least that's what the word implies. Releases, releases, let me do that in the same color. This is something that is going to release, release work, work energy. Energy. And endergonic, same logic. Well, that's going to be something based on just the word, the way the word is set up, that absorbs work energy or uses, uses work, work, energy. Now, one of our one of our uh, our variables or or properties that we can use to think about energy that can be used for work is Gibbs free energy, and the formula for Gibbs free energy, if we're thinking about constant pressure and temperature. So let me write that down. So if we're talking about constant, constant pressure, pressure, and, and temperature, then the formula for Gibbs free energy, or you can even view this as a definition of Gibbs free energy, the change in Gibbs free energy, let me do this in another color, the change in Gibbs free energy is equal to our change in enthalpy, our change in enthalpy minus minus, let me do this in a different color, minus our temperature, minus our temperature times our change in entropy. And if this looks completely foreign to you, I encourage you to watch the video on Gibbs free energy. But the reason why this is related to energy for work is, OK, look, I have, I have my, whether I'm absorbing or I'm releasing heat, and I'm subtracting out entropy, which is kind of the energy that is, is going to the disorder of the universe. And what's left over is, is the energy that I can do for work. That's one way to think about it. And so you can see that this relates work energy to change in enthalpy right over here. And so exergonic. Exergonic, something that releases work energy. You could say that it has less work energy after the reaction than before it. Your delta G is going to be less than zero. So let me write that down. So here, our delta G is going to be less than zero. And these things, these reactions that release work energy, we've seen it in the video on Gibbs for energy. We consider these to be spontaneous. Spon spontaneous. These are going to move forward. And so these over here, the ones that absorb work energy, well, they're going to have more work energy in the system than before is one way to think about it. And so your delta G, your delta G is going to be greater than zero. And we say these are not spontaneous. So these are not spon spontaneous.
So now that we have the definitions out of the way and we have a way to relate these variables, let's look at these different scenarios of things that are exothermic and then exergonic or exothermic and endergonic and, and see why they make an intuitive sense. So in this first reaction, it's exothermic. Our delta H is less than zero. That means it has less enthalpy after the reaction than before, which means it released heat. And so you can see here, this heat is being released. And where does that energy come from? Well, when, the, when, the, when it bonds in these new configurations on a net basis, the electrons are able to go to lower energy states and release that energy. And heat, if you're thinking about it on a microscopic scale, it's something that's raising a temperature, at least locally, which it means just about transferring kinetic energy to these, to these microscopic molecules. Remember, when you're talking about heat or temperature, you're thinking about these macro variables. But on a microscopic variable, you're talking about you know, kinetic energies and potential energies and things like that. So what's happening is these electrons are uh, when they get into a new configuration and they're going to they're going to release energy and that can be transferred to the individual to the individual molecules. And so you see here we've released energy and we also have an increase in entropy. We have more entropy after the reaction than before the reaction. We have more we have more objects right over here. There's more states in which they could actually be in and and they're actually moving faster. And so this one we see if you just apply if you apply the formula over here, this is going to be less than 0. This over here, delta S is going to be greater than zero. The temperature, that's going to be absolute temperature in terms of Kelvin, so it's always going to be positive. And so this whole term is going to be positive. So you're going to have a negative minus a positive is going to be negative. So our delta G, our delta G is going to be less than zero. And we see that this is spontaneous. This is going to move forward. And it makes sense. It releases energy. The electrons like it. It creates a more disordered state. If, think, another way to think about it is think about trying to do the reaction the other way. You're going to have to get some energy for those electrons to get into a, a higher energy state when they form these new bonds. You're going to have to get these four constituents together in the exact right way. That seems a, less like, a, lot, a lot less likely to happen than going in from the left to the right. Now let's think about something that absorbs heat. And this one's a little bit counterintuitive. It absorbs heat, but it's still going to be spontaneous. It's still going to be exergonic. It's still going to happen. So delta H is greater than zero. So it absorbs heat to happen. So I have these two molecules with these different constituents. They're about to collide. And we're saying that the temperature is high. If the temperature is low, this might not be spontaneous. But if the temperature is high enough, it will be. So the temperature high on a microscopic basis, you're saying, okay, these things just have a really high kinetic energy. They're going to ram into each other really fast. And they're going to ram into each other so fast that they can form all these other constituents. And so you have the, the, you have the net entropy, you have the net entropy has increased. And even though over here our electrons are in a higher energy state to form these configurations, so it had to absorb heat. So it had to absorb heat energy. So we could say heat, but heat on a microscopic level, we're just talking about uh, kind of kinetic energy of, of these molecules. So it'd have to absorb it. But where, where, did that, where did that energy come from? Well, it came from the kinetic energy of, of the molecules. They might, have been, they might have had a certain kinetic energy before, but then some of that gets lost so when, when they all get banged up into their different configurations. And if you're saying, well, I, I still don't get this. Think about trying to do this reaction the other way. Try to get these four constituents in the right time all together, even though if they're happening, if they're, if they're, if they're put together the right way, their electrons could configure in a way to release energy. But this is super high temperature. This is a really, really chaotic system. It's not going to go from right to left. It's going to go from left to right. When, It's really chaotic. Things are banging each other really fast. You're more likely to go in a direction of, of higher entropy. So now let's look at, now let's look at the, and so this is spontaneous, even though it absorbs heat. It absorbs heat. If you're not draining the heat away locally, your, your, your temperature, or at least around these molecules, it will go down. But of course, we assume, we're assuming constant temperature for this. So you can assume that you know, on a macro level, that temperature dissipates and gets absorbed outside of the system somehow. Now let's look at this configuration. It's exothermic, so delta H is less than zero, less enthalpy after the reaction than before, so it's releasing heat. But it's not spontaneous. And it's not spontaneous because it's reducing the entropy in the world. It's reducing the entropy in the world. And the entropy matters because our temperature is high. One way to look at this equation is entropy doesn't matter when temperature is low. Temperature is really scaling your entropy. But when, ent when temperature is high, entropy starts to take over. This variable starts to matter a lot. 
And so over here, because entropy is negative, this isn't gonna, this thing's not gonna actually happen. So if these things were coming together very slowly, their electrons could configure in just the right way so that they can get to a lower energy state and release energy, but they're buzzing past each other so fast that they're not gonna have a chance to do that. And if you think about it the other way, this reaction is much more likely to happen. If you have a bunch of these diatomic molecules running around, they're going to bump into each other so fast that they're going to knock, they're going to knock the constituents off of, these, off of these diatomic molecules, or at least the way I've depicted it kind of looks like a diatomic molecule. And they'll, they might absorb some of that kinetic energy in doing it in order to go from right to left, but that's more likely to happen. So from left to right, not spontaneous, because entropy really matters at this high temperature. And then finally, and this one's pretty intuitive, something that needs heat, something that needs heat energy and has a reduction in entropy, that's definitely not going to be spontaneous. So this is greater than zero, this is less than zero, which, but then you're subtracting it, so this whole thing is greater than zero, this delta G is going to be greater than zero. Delta, let me do that in that green color. This delta G, is going to be greater than zero. And it makes sense that you have these two molecules. They have to get together in just the right way. They need heat in order to proceed with this reaction to, to kind of excite, to, to excite the electrons to higher energy state to get into this, I guess you could say, less stable bond. Why would, do, why would they do that? The reaction is much more likely to go in this way, where if you had a bunch of these molecules, they're all knocking into each other. They get into a more stable configuration, and there's more entropy when, there's, when, they, when they split up than when they actually stay together. So delta G greater than zero. This is endergonic and endothermic. And of course, this one was delta G greater than zero. Even though this would release energy, the, the, the things are so chaotic, they're not going to have a chance to do that. And you're much more likely to go in the direction of, of maximizing entropy. And so this one also is not spontaneous.